Good morning from NPTI Orlando. Today we're looking at the overhead squat and your tip of the week will be directly related to the forward lean during a squat. What we have is four different scenarios here of the overhead squat so we can raise our hands overhead and what we have here is a good overhead squat with no excessive forward lean so if you can perform for me please. Over here we have another client with a little forward lean over here we have a client with a greater degree of forward lean and the last one with lots of forward lean. Historically the forward lean has been attributed to dysfunction at the lumbo-pelvic hip complex. We now know from British research it often starts at the ankle. So if we can get you guys to perform your overhead squats, let's do 10 repetitions please. So essentially the degree of dorsiflexion down and up, all of you in synchronicity, down and up please, 10 reps. The degree of dorsiflexion at the ankle here dictates the body's ability to actually drop down into that space that's provided by having your feet further apart. So for example, we did an assessment on Walia and she had 25 degrees of dorsiflexion of the ankle. Anywhere from 15 to 20 degrees, which is what D has, will also give you quite a successful squat. As we move up the chain here, we have clients with less degrees of dorsiflexion, hence that's what happens is they tend to lean forward because they cannot drop down because the ankle dorsiflexion is not as good. One of the compensations you also see for lack of dorsiflexion of the ankle is that when they go down, their feet will turn out. So if you look at tie at the end here as she goes down her feet's going to turn out excessively and come back up as she go down feet turn out tie good that's because of a concept called relative flexibility the body seeking the pathway of least resistance so what is the solution when it comes to soft tissues of this particular nature being overactive and underactive I can ask you to turn uh, to the front for me thank you that way it means that quite frankly what we need to evaluate is the overactiveness of the soleus muscle and the gastrocnemius. So in the gym we would be foam rolling the soleus, foam rolling the gastrocnemius and stretching those muscles out and conversely we would strengthen the tibialis anterior. How long does it take? Well, it depends. It depends on the severity. It might take a number of weeks for you to feel and see any real difference, or it might take months. But at least what you're starting to do is pinpoint the pathology and work towards it. What I preferably would not want to see from my personal trainer is for them to give their client a squat, lift your heels for me please, and place a piece of wood or a weight plate on the heel as they do a squat because really it doesn't really address the issue of limited dorsiflexion at the ankle. And that's your personal training tip of the week from the advanced training course at NPTI Florida. Thanks for following NPTI Florida, I'm Pat Sherman. Just wanna let you know we appreciate you guys liking us, following us, and friending us. Uh, continue to watch our YouTube channel. We're gonna to try to do a really good job of giving you as much information about the fitness industry as possible this year. If you're looking to become a personal trainer, you're excited about helping other people become healthy, give us a call at 407-772-0057. That's 407-772-0057. Give us a call, come on in, tour, work out for free anytime. Thanks again.